Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to my gaming review of this bad boy. I'm talking about the Razer Blade 17 Pro. Now I'm not gonna waste any more time, so let's start gaming. So the brand new Razer Blade 17 Pro was just announced recently. We spent some time with this bad boy. And I've gotta say though, I am truly impressed with what Razer has brought to the table. Now, first off, when you pick this bad boy up, it is a six pound laptop. Feels like a slightly heavy five pounder, but I like its compact size, nature, and look. Now, the one thing, of course, you know with Razer laptops is that they are fingerprint magnets, as you can clearly see. So I wish there was a matte finish or at least something uh, that just stopped a little bit of that fingerprints on there. But besides that, this thing is packed with a lot in terms of specs. You're looking at the brand new 10th gen Intel uh, Core i7 processor. This is an eight core processor, uh, which is pretty nice. You've also got um, something pretty new this year. You've got RT, uh, RTX 2070 Max-Q variant and also an RTX 2080 Max-Q Super. And the displays, you have two options between full HD, 300 Hertz, yes, and 4K touch 120Hz. So again, something pretty high. Now, this variant I have here has the full HD 300Hz, so that's actually pretty cool to check out. And also, it's got customizable internals. Pretty easy to open, uh, where you can, of course, go ahead and add more storage of NVMe or swap out the other one, so they actually two NVMe slots, and also change and upgrade your, your RAM, which actually starts at 16 gigabytes. Now, I like this because if you're like me and you're playing a lot of Warzone right now, you just got an update for Warzone, and if you also have Call of Duty uh, as well, it's 200 gigabytes. Think about it. You can't have like a 200 gigabyte NVMe. You've got to go to a terabyte. So having that extra slot in here, it's great, it's fantastic. I love that Razer and I love that thinking because I don't have to actually spend crazy amount of money because this thing starts at 1,199 if you're getting the RTX 2060. Now, if you're getting this package size I have here, which is the full HD 300 Hertz uh, in there, um, then you're getting, you're paying about 3,199. If you're doing the 4K touch, that goes up more to about 3,799. So uh, that's the one that also increases its storage to one terabyte. But you can stay with, uh, with Full HD 300 and you can upgrade manually. So that part is pretty nice. Now, speakers on these things are also pretty loud and clear when you're gaming. So take a quick listen. It looks better. It looks like the iPhone has the best crop out of all of them, it's the widest, but they all seem to be looking pretty good right now. Let me know which microphone sounds. So speakers are good, that's great, but what about games? How do they play? Well, I'll show you some gameplay. Uh, of course, some Call of Duty Mobile, some Apex, a little Witcher 3 as well, uh, just to see how this actually functions and plays in some Tomb Raider. So you get a good idea of what kind of performance you're getting from the Razer Blade Pro 17.
Hmm. Can't figure out the dialect. I must be missing something. Now, I've got to say that I was really impressed with the Razor Blade Pro 17. Something you will not clearly see is how good that Full HD 300Hz display was. Now, I have not used a 240Hz display for a good length of time to do any review, especially on the laptop. I have used a 120Hz display, and I can tell you there is a huge difference from moving from 120 to 300. I don't know about 240, but it is a huge difference, and I really enjoyed it. And the fact that my monitor right here, my gaming monitor, is 144Hz display. When I went back to play Call of Duty on this monitor, it felt a little old. So I like the fact that 300Hz, I wanna get a 300Hz monitor, I'll put it that way. So I like that it's here on this system. But because you're using a 300Hz display, you're gonna use a lot of power. That's where you see a lot with this game. Like you know, when I was playing Call of Duty uh, for a good amount of time, um, this thing heats up really high. 120 degrees uh, 119 degrees they're about that's hot so it becomes a little harder for you to use uh, that's something I would say that you have to bear in mind now it does have some really nice cooling uh, if you set it at auto it pretty much keeps it at 120 if you actually manually push it then those temperatures do drop down but I will warn you though uh, it becomes really really loud so you have to use a headset to play a game uh, and which of course is something a lot of people will do so those are the kind of negative negative caveats I do not like with this. What I do like with it is the performance. Now we run, you know, ran some benchmarks and, you know, we did um, Time Spy uh, with Cinebench. Uh, and for that, you know, that came up at about 40,356. It was pretty high. It's pretty much always slightly underneath, of course, an um, RX 3700X, uh, of course, with RTX 2080. But, you know, when we also did our Cinebench R20, it came out right below a Xenon processor. So uh, the only things that were higher were Threadripper processors. So that makes a lot of sense with this laptop. I'm just showing you the benchmarks. I'm just something I really don't uh, really put too much attention to. I like to play the games. For me, the games played well. I had no issues with them. The keyboard was also really comfortable and easy to use. I really like the keyboard, especially for typing and gaming. It felt easy to navigate back and forth. That touchpad was really nice. Now, of course, you're not going to use the touchpad to game, so you're going to use an external mouse, and that's where all the plethora of ports come in. So you've got on your right side, a HDMI port, a USB 3.0 port, a Thunderbolt, and of course, an SD card reader. Again, this is a pro device. On the right hand side, that's where you have two more USB uh, 3.0 ports, a USB type C port, and an Ethernet 2.5 gigabyte, and of course a proprietary power port. That is cool. So you've got enough ports for all the things you need. Now this uses a 70.5 watt uh, battery, and of course the charger is a little bit larger, but it's kind of trimmed down in size over the years. So I do like that with this. I think overall, a lot of people will like this laptop. This is more of a device if you're going, trying to go away from, of course, a desktop experience. You want something that has performance you can take with you on the road. I like it. I like the performance. I like what it brings to the table. I also like the fact that you can go all the way to, you know, the 2080 uh, Super Max Q. So that, of course, is pretty dope. Now, a couple of things just to add quickly. It does have a Windows Hello camera. I did check out the camera uh, in terms of video quality for, of course, zooms and streams because we're doing a lot of that lately. It was decent at best, not something too crazy that I would like. Uh, the microphone was also okay. So I'll just bear that in mind. It is passable, but you definitely need a lot of forward light for your video conferencing if you need that. 
So this is a quick example of what you get from the webcam of the Razorblade Stealth 17. It is a 720p webcam. Uh, so if you're looking to do video calls, you need ideal lighting. I actually, I've got sunlight coming to my left, but you probably need more lighting to actually accentuate this well. And also a good idea of what the microphone is like using just the built-in mic on the laptop and not a headset. So put that in mind and uh, let's continue. But overall, I think this is a fun laptop that you will definitely enjoy while gaming, using on the go, uh, especially with that. Now, if you're talking about gaming uh, battery life and with just the battery power, you can actually customize that to push the frame rate because usually you drop the custom frame rate in half, but the battery life is about an hour and a half or so, something that's not too crazy. You're gonna be plugging this in to game. So those are my thoughts on the Razorblade Pro 17. I like the performance, I like what it brings to the table. This is the high-end gaming laptop and I think it definitely delivers. Again, I will like to see the 4000 series AMD processor in something like this because we've seen how it's done in other laptops, a so Razer. Check, please, let's see that for an update next year. That's just my thoughts. Uh, I like to see the kind of performance and all that kind of fun jazz, but again, this is pretty cool. If you want to pick it up, guys, use the link down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.